In this video, I'm going to talk through this figure in the textbook to help explain an example where non-ignorable missing data causes bias, both when looking at the unconditional mean and when looking at a regression slope. So in this example, the vertical axis is earnings, and the numbers don't really matter here, so I didn't put any numbers because that would just distract us from the main point. Uh, first, we'll look at the right graph over here. So here where it says data, this is showing the individuals who were randomly sampled from the population. So if we look at all the circles, both the filled and unfilled together, that's a nice IID sample from the population. And so if we could observe all those values and just take the sample mean, that would give us a good estimate of the population mean. And that's exactly what this black uh, plus sign here is. It's the sample mean if we looked at all the individuals who were sampled. The difficulty here is that people with the highest earnings do not respond to our survey question about earnings. So we've found these individuals, but they simply don't tell us their earnings. The only values that we can observe are these red filled circles down here for the lower earning individuals. And as should be clear, if we take a nice sample, but then we throw away all the high values, we'll end up with downward bias or negative bias. And so if we take the sample mean just of the observed non-missing values, these red filled circles, we get this red plus, and we can see that it is uh, below the black marker and showing that we have some negative bias or downward bias. That's a little less obvious that this will cause problems for regression. So to make it simple here, the x variable, the regressor, is just a binary variable, 0 or 1. Uh, indicating whether the individual had a college degree or not. Uh, so here I've exaggerated it a little bit to emphasize the fact that people with college degrees tend to have higher earnings than people without college degrees. And because of that, if we look at people without college degrees, since they're most of mostly these lower earning individuals, most of them just answer our survey and tell us their earnings. Only these two at the very, very top in the no college group uh, have missing values. In contrast, when we look at the college degree individuals, uh, most of them are the high earners and they do not respond to our survey. And so in our data set, uh, their values are just missing, or in R it would be NA. And so because of that, if we just look at the no college sample, our sample mean of the observed values is actually pretty close to the sample mean of all the values. If hypothetically we were omniscient and we knew the earnings even when they weren't reported. But when we look at the college degree group, uh, similar to in the unconditional case, we're missing over half of the highest earnings observations. And so if we look at the sample mean of observed values, it's much below the uh, overall, I should say, conditional sample mean for this group. And if you recall from earlier chapters, when x is binary, the slope is equal to the difference in means or difference in conditional means. So if we have roughly the same conditional mean here, 
but a much lower conditional mean here, that means the slope will also be uh, lower. So we'll again have this negative bias on the slope coefficient. Uh, it's not true that we'll always have negative bias just in this particular example. Uh, you could think of other examples or maybe there's positive bias. Um, and we can sort of see that just visually from the picture, right? If you try to draw a red line that's the best fit between just the red dots, we'll get this flatter line here. Whereas if we also include the missing values, we'd have a much steeper slope. Uh, so this was just an example to help illustrate how non-ignorable missing data, um, in this case where whether or not the value is missing depends on the value itself, the earnings value, uh, how that can lead to bias both of unconditional mean and uh, regression slope estimators.